मेरा नाम आचार्य जी जी सर वाइज एंड अनवाइज मैन आर बोथ रिलेटेड टू द वर्ल्ड ऑन द पेरिफेरी बोथ वाइज एंड अनवाइज पर्सन एटीट्यूड टू वर्स द एक्सटर्नल सर्कमस्टांसेस अपियर टू बी सेम uh wise man will also moan and wise will man will also moan and so on and so forth these all look to be quite similar in nature but uh, wise man is uh, moaning because uh, he is uh, going uh, you know away from the path of liberation and 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 otherwise for the unwise man so sir but on the uh, uh, in 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 the in today's world what i see is unwise person seems to be making lot of these arguments uh, which otherwise suit a wise person similar to what arjuna has been doing and on the contrary the contrary these people are revered more as opposed to a wise person in the in in the world today and it's it appears to me as quite unfortunate because uh, that's not uh, the way we look at it from today's verse so i just wanted to have your view on this sir that's the wrong relationship that the world is choosing to have with an unwise man if you are to respect you have to respect someone who is wise and who can bring his wisdom to your use instead if you choose to have a relationship of respect with someone who is himself unwise obviously he can be of no use to you so again it's a failure of relationship something is misplaced respect is something that has to be placed at the right point similarly lack of respect or withdrawal of respect again is of tremendous importance it is impossible to to respect something very useful and also respect something very useless respect is not something universal to respect is to admit that there is something there worthy of absorption something there i can look up to hmm? and if you respect just about everything then you are absorbing a lot of trash so respect has to be exclusive selective it has to be an act of distinction it has to be an act of exception it cannot be something by default if only the exceptional one is to be is to be respected then respect has to be an act of exception making i have made an exception by respecting you respect is not something that i just throw about like crumbs to dogs you have to know the right relationship with everything everything so even in case of uh, mourning for living or dead as what is explained in today's verse uh mourning seems to be revered in today's world it's like almost uh, you, uh people i mean people who are mourning seem to get a lot of sympathy as opposed to having a, a you know a wise man telling that this is not the one that what uh, you know you should be mourning for because it is that person living or dead is not taking you to it is assumed that the mourner knows his mind it is assumed that if a person is weeping he knows that he has indeed lost something of substance and value it is assumed and it's a huge assumption i find you weeping i come to you with consolations not words of realization but words of consolation what is my assumption ha ah, my assumption is that first of all you have indeed lost something i'm saying that's a huge assumption most people who are weeping are weeping for nothing that which they are weeping for 
has little value that they which are not weeping for is everything and they do not know of its loss hmm? so that's why compassion and consolation are so different right hmm? sympathy and empathy are very different when you are compassionate first of all you know where the person stands in compassion you never allow yourself to feel as if something really substantial has been lost if nothing substantial has been lost what then is compassion for compassion is to display to the person that he has actually not lost much in consolation you consolidate his belief that he has indeed lost something you tell him may god give you the power to bear the great loss is that not a typical statement of consolation may god give the bereaved family to bear the irreparable loss what have you told him the loss is real we do not claim to assert that the loss is unreal we are just using this example to bring out the nature of the the consolation process in consolation the first assumption is that the fellow is indeed wise if he is weeping then he does have a genuine reason to shed tears that's a huge assumption the wise one has compassion not consolation consolation in compassion first of all you see what is it that deserves to be loved what is it that deserves to be ignored and gently <coughs> you want to bring the same realization to the other hmm son you are weeping for something that must not be wept for and there are other things that you must rather be worried about you're totally ignoring them in your in your melancholy mood the new car has been stolen the new car has been stolen the fellow is absolutely disconsolate why he had forgotten his hair band in the car you have no measure of what deserves to be wept for i had left my shades in the car that's mentioned even in the fir the fir says my shades have been stolen incidentally they were in a car a newly bought car it's all right to weep but after having a real assessment of the loss you're weeping for something that's of so little value shades bands wrist bands toothbrush oh i mean i don't think somebody forgets toothbrush in the car what socks
and you have no 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 feeling for the real thing for the big thing that you are losing the saint will not say do not cry he will say cry for the right reason cry you must but for the right reason your problem is pettiness your problem is misplaced attention you have been crying horse for an hour continue for another two i'm not here to stop you but cry for the reason right reason if the reason be right come on kill me even that is acceptable if the reason is right everything is acceptable they say all is fair in love and war no all is fair in the process of realization liberation yes sir uh, so as you mentioned the wise man simply sees and being attentive to the situation um so uh does that mean that if a person is observing the current situation whatever it is without being consumed or attached with the consequences or whatsoever can he afford to smile as what krishna krishna has been doing uh, while listening to arjuna's uh, illogical statements you observe a situation so that you can know your right relationship with it you are not yet liberated if you are not yet liberated you need relationships krishna can afford to coolly smile you cannot krishna stands truly detached whereas we are in the process we have not yet arrived so do not just try to emulate krishna krishna is not there to fight mind the symbolism arjun has to fight krishna can at most tell the right thing to arjun but the participation the engagement has to be arjun's krishna is not going to get engaged or entangled he says fine i'm mean, Hmm? Krishna being a charioteer is a very potent symbol. Please understand, you are Arjun, not Krishna. When I teach Gita, do I say that first of all you must understand that you are Krishna? What do I emphasize on? Arjun. Please see your identity with Arjun. Okay. So you are Arjun. Arjun has to dispassionately observe to know the right relationship. as far as krishna is concerned there is hardly any relationship right sir arjun's position is of greater use to us because we are like so when it comes to arjun remember there there has to be a relationship you have to go through the uh, the whole thing you have to navigate through the entire spectrum of relationships you will you will you have to see sadness you will have to see closeness you will have to see coming together and then uh, falling out and patch ups and break ups and uh, affiliations and disillusionments you will have to go through the entire spectrum uh, you are not krishna you are not krishna hmm? your job is to know how to navigate you cannot say you are at the destination therefore you don't need to navigate 
you do need to navigate. You are not at the destination. And to navigate, you must know your relationship with every turn, every bend, every signal, every symbol, and every, every part of your vehicle and your body. You must know everything. You have a relationship with everything. Spirituality is not about bringing an end to relationships. It's about having right, right thing. Hmm? So that, that mm, classical faded image of the spiritual man just dispassionately watching everything with a smile is not very useful. What smile? You are supposed to laugh, you are supposed to cry, you are supposed to burn in anger and envy. You are supposed to, to dance. You are supposed to put yourself together and you are also supposed to break down. You are supposed to experience every bit of it. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. But in the in the right relationship with the sole objective of knowing, realization, liberation, call it whatever. If someone says, I'm a wise man, I'm a spiritual man, therefore I never experience whatever. Yeah, yeah. Fraudster. Fraud. Even Krishna gets angry and you say you are a spiritual man, so you never get angry. Imposter. Actor. That to a bad one. Hmm? I'm a spiritual man. I, I, I've never... Never, never experienced lust. You are not a spiritual man, you are just important. You have to go through everything. In that lies the possibility and in that lies the challenge. Sir, based on the relationship that I carry with the Prakriti, um, the relation should be something which should take me towards liberation as opposed to the other way, uh, wherein I get too much consumed with uh, uh, the, you know, the, the objects of Prakriti which is taking me away from Atma or liberation. So, sir, my question was uh, that often at times when... Uh, we have these relationship and we we kind of uh, make use of it to go to the liberation uh, we can seemingly use something which could be of uh, uh, you know godly nature for example worshiping the gods etc and then we get too much consumed with that which actually in a process uh, makes us uh, a little go off track uh, towards the path of liberation and to reach to atma but even though worshipping God seems to be the object in the Prakriti itself, which on the periphery it appears that it may lead me to the ultimate liberation. You know, that's possible not just with worship of a deity, but with, uh, but with respect to anything that you choose. It could be a food item, it could be... Money, it could be a person, anything. Your love must constantly reverberate within. Even as you are looking at the one in front of you, you must remember the one in the middle of you. Mm -hmm. 
you're not looking at that one, the one in front, just to keep gawking. You're looking at that one so that something within can materialize. He is a means to be used. used. Hmm? Now it could be an idol, it could be knowledge, it could be money, does not matter what it is. It puzzled me for a while. I, I had uh, I read this story. I was very young. So there is this uh, fellow teacher, a guide, something who gets stranded on an island. with a few of his uh, disciples. Hmm? So what to do, how to survive? So initially he forbids them from eating anything. He says you will not eat anything. And the challenge is survival. And they are all capable disciples. He forbids them from eating anything. And himself, he eats. He keeps eating and he says, uh, none of you will eat anything. And very actively, he and the uh, mentees, they all look for uh, ways to escape. And then they do discover some way to escape. Hmm? But it turns out that the escape will take uh, a few more days or a few more weeks, something. And uh, their resources won't last that long, the food that is. So now he has uh, just kept the entire team on fasting, just emaciated them and he has himself been eating. Hmm? So he has maintained his weight or rather gained some weight and now he tells his chaps, huh? uh, eat me. So he tells them you kill me and eat me. And now you have been doubly helped. Because you have been kept on fasting for so long, therefore, hmm, your urge to eat has been reduced. You have learnt to survive on very little. You do not need much. Hmm, you do not need much. And myself, I have all the food, and now that when I will be gone, this body will be of help to you. I found this quite strange. I was a kid. But I got the idea. The real thing is about being of use. I must be of use in my death. And if I can be of use to you only by dying, I will die. And it's not that I am saving you just because it's a moral virtue or something. You guys deserve to be saved. You are young, bright students who have life in front of them. I am greying and aging. 
सो इवन इफ आई लिव आई लिव फॉर अ फ्यू मोर इयर्स एन आई एनी वे बी डाउन टू एशेज सो यू यू कंज्यूम माई बॉडी सो दैट यू कैन सर्वाइव सो दायर नेरेटिव हैड टू डिफरेंट पार्ट वन वेयर इट अपियर दैट द टीचर इज एक्चुअली बींग क्रूएल बिकॉज बिकॉज ही इज ईटिंग ऑल द स्टफ himself and he is keeping the others on very major diet you will not eat anything and then one day he says fine now you have learned to survive on nothing now you can eat me hmm? who will call this entire uh, interaction as one of love no for us love is roses and candies and choco boxes Hmm? Your cheeks are so soft, and your this is this love. Here is my flesh. Eat it. Jesus said, "My blood will be your wine. My flesh will be your bread." so that that usefulness has to be remembered it's a different way of looking at yourself and the other and the relationship and if you can learn this way you'll go far thank you sir mm.